Hi there, you might have seen some of my uh, other videos on uh, a, a control system being built in my camper van yeah, using a, an Arduino board. Um, so I, th I thought I'd run through some code here. Um, basically, the <laughs> yeah, this is going to be a, a, a multi-level video uh, because there's going to be people who have come here uh, searching for Arduino stuff and some people who have come here searching for some camper van stuff. If you know about Arduino, great, you'll pick this up. I'm going to do no big explanations. Uh, this is this is overall guidance. Um, if you don't know about Arduino, uh, this isn't going to be um, a load of hardware you can just buy off scammers on an eBay, copy a bit of code, bang it in, and it's going to work. You know, you're going to have to learn about this stuff. Um, I'm, not, I'm not a coder, you know. It's uh, uh, I'd never touched an Arduino till January, and it's been a steep learning curve. Um, but I've been a... Uh, I've been a, a dug with a bone in this, you know, I've really wanted this working in my camper van. I spend a lot of time during the year on it, uh, living in it. Uh, about four months last year, uh, a month so far this year. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, um, I'm going to be using it more. So, yeah, th this is really, really useful. Having, uh, you know, a, a display that you can read temperatures and monitor things and control things. You know, absolutely phenomenal. Anyway, so I thought I'd go through a bit of the code. Um, quick recap of the hardware I've got. Um, I've got an Arduino Mega, um, which is basically is taking temperature readings from various points around the van. Um, I'm using voltage dividers to take various voltage measurements, of batteries, etc. Um, measuring water tank levels. Uh, and I've also got an I2C relay board. Uh, and on the touchscreen, I've designed menus uh, with buttons on which control these relays. Um, I'll do a, a separate video on the next day and stuff on the, the touchscreen. So yeah, just sort of quickly run through the, the Arduino sketch, um, and you'll get a wee uh, get a wee idea of how this is working. I'll try and keep it as concise and to the point as possible. Uh, it's only really an overview. I'm not going through the code line by line. Uh, so yeah, I setting up our libraries here. I've tried to keep the, the, the libraries to a minimum, uh, keep the code dead simple. Uh, for example, the next day in touchscreen displays have their own library. For what I'm doing, I'm just receiving uh, serial text and sending serial text to and from the display. So don't need the library, keeps the code, uh, keeps the code simple. Uh, so yeah, so we're defining uh, pins here, various uh, analog and digital pins, uh, mostly using analog pins with this. Uh, I see I've got the two touch screens. I've got uh, lots of analog inputs measuring voltages. The temperature is all done on the digital pins, and I've got a, an eight-channel I2C relay board. So rather than use eight different digital pins, uh, I've got a board which connects to the Arduino over the I2C bus. Um, boards can be daisy chained, completely extensible. It's great. Two wires, two pins, less connections to go wrong in a moving vehicle. Um, so how the, how the overall code is structured has got to be non-blocking. Uh, I'm taking a lot of readings, um, which, you know, I don't need a reading every, you know, 500 milliseconds or even every 10 seconds. So every minute, few minutes is fine. Uh, uh, but I need to keep the code clear to receive the send and receive the serial from uh, to and from the next in touchscreen displays. So there's not a single bit of delay. There's not a single delay command in this whole bit of code. Um, it's all done by uh, timing intervals and calling functions. Uh, so I've got a timing interval set up for each of the functions there. Uh, so that's what that deals with. Um, this is uh, setting up the uh, I2C buffer for the relay board um, for receiving the, the text from the displays. Bit of code here, just defining DHT sensors. I'm using two types of sensors, DHT22s. They deal with all the internal readings. Uh, they're not waterproof sensors, but they're very accurate and they do humidity as well. And then for anything that needs to be waterproof, uh, hot and cold water tanks, uh, outside, things like that, I'm using the uh, DS18 B20 sensors. Uh, and I've just hard-coded their uh, hardware address in here, it makes it simple. Uh, I've got a load of voltage monitoring. Uh, I've got a, an opto-isolated AC um, module. For obvious reasons, it makes it safe, it's isolated. DC monitoring is done via voltage dividers, um, two resistors, a 10K and a 4.7. Uh, 
I've got a water volume sensor, which is a throw-in, uh, it's a DF robot um, throw-in gravity sensor, and uh, that that gives me the uh, the water volume. Um, I actually extrapolate. I've got to extrapolate the the volume, i.e. liters, from the liquid level. Uh, so there's a bit of extrapolation needed with the code. Pretty easy though. LPG cage is gauge. It's actually a dual fuel van. It's petrol. Um, and LPG LPG is great. They're just taking a lot of the pumps out now. Um, but this is basically the the, the gauge in the front of the van is knackered. It's, it's years old. Um, so I never know how much is in the tank because I've got a touch screen in the front cab. Um, I thought if I can read the sender unit on the LPG tank, uh, I can process process this and put a reading onto the. Uh, display in the front. So that's what I've done. Uh, a bit of googling found out that the sender unit is just a, a variable resistor uh, between 0 and 100 ohms, 100 being uh, uh, 93 litres, um, 0 being 0. Uh, so it's fairly accurate. So I've just said it's similar to a voltage divider circuit there, so I've got 100 ohm resistor blah, blah, blah. reading on an analog pin. So that's that. So into the void setup, we're setting up our three serial ports serial for the serial monitor debugger. Um, the two touchscreen displays, the next ends, are connected just uh, over serial. So serial one is the one in the bunkhouse, serial two is the one in the cab. We've got a load of um, uh, pin modes, inputs and outputs, the various functions, and we start our temperature monitors. This section of code here uh, sets up the um, I2C bus for the relay board. Um, as I said before, the boards are, uh, it's an extensible system being over I2C so that the, the boards can be daisy chained. Uh, so you give each board an I2C address and each uh, relay um, is then a channel on that board. So uh, board one and we've got channels one to eight, so relays one to eight. So that's all that's doing. And that's the end of the setup. So the loop, uh, as I said before, but it's non-blocking code, so the very first thing to set up in the loop um, is the timers. Uh, so here's one for the DHT22 sensors, waterproof sensors, uh, voltage monitoring, uh, water level, and this one, oh, that's the LPG, the ohm reading one here. So, um, so how these timers work is if uh, the, the, the timer clicks over or is hit, a function is called. If the uh, if if the timer doesn't uh, tick um, or or reach you know whatever point, um, the function isn't called. So it's a pretty efficient code. Um, so first function here is measure the water from that sensor. Um, so we're doing an analog read on that water pin. It was defined up the top. Um, doing a bit of serial print here for debugging. So this is this is where uh, this is where we send uh, text the next same display we're just sending it over serial it's uh so what we're doing here is we are sending um so if if the resistance reading is equal to less than 98 uh we are sending um 0 to 5 l or liters to display to be displayed as text in element l0 so i'll, I'll do a separate video on the next same touch screen displays and explain the elements and stuff but it's that simple so we are sending that as text to this part of the screen, which is a, uh, an area that we've defined on the screen in the next day. Uh, I'm also, because this is water, uh, water levels, uh, I'm defining um, the colour of that little text block on the next day in display. And I'm changing the colour, so red, amber, green, depends on how full it is. Uh, so again, using if statements here, um, if, if the voltage is higher than 99, change the colour to, that will be amber. Um, if the uh, if the uh, reading is more than one or two, um, change it to this. S -s -s send this to there as text, and change the background colour of the text box to there. So you get the idea of that. Uh, and most of that works the same. Here's the function for DC volts. Um, so again, that only gets called uh, called when the uh, when the timer hits that point. Same with the main battery. So here's the voltage divider uh, code here and calculation and uh, it uh, 
outputs as milli volts out uh, or, or MV underscore A. So we send that value to this part of the next scene display on serial one, which is where the one in the bunkhouse is connected to. Uh, dead simple. And then again, traffic light system, we're changing the uh, background colour off V1, uh, depending on the, the value there. If you want to learn, uh, yeah, if you want to learn how to use the next scene displays with Arduino, um, without using uh, the Arduino library, there's uh, cheap controls to, they've got a great channel online on, on YouTube. And these guys are experts, you know, they do all the, uh, all the, the, the proper math magicians. <laughs> uh, they, they understand the next day in code, uh, which is a variation on C+, plus, I believe, very badly implemented. Uh, hey, who am I to comment? You know, I've stumbled through this project. Well worth a look, though. Um, and there's a guy on the Arduino forum, if you um, uh, do a search in the Arduino official forum for uh, next day in commands, there's a... Uh, Pages and pages of there, when the guy's a wizard. Um, so yeah, more of the same. Uh, here's a function for reading the uh, uh, AC voltage module and then extrapolating the, the data from that. And then again, that's just sent to the, the, the next day in display. Um, this part, we're reading temperatures. So again, we're sending the output temp1, which is uh, temp1 equals get temp in degrees Celsius from probe T1 and we're sending that to T3 <laughs> which is the outdoor temperature uh, part of the uh, element on the display on the next day in display. Incidentally you know I could send this to uh, and I've got some of these sensors here we go so I'm sending the outdoor temperature to the display in the uh, bunkhouse on serial one uh, and also I've got a, a part, an element displayed on, uh, defined on the next in display in the cab, and that's on serial two. I've kept the, uh, I've named them both the same T3, just for simplicity. So you can do that. You can cast the same data for multiple next in displays all at once. Uh, it's, it's really, really good. Really good. Um, uh, and again, we're changing the background colours. So that's sending data to the display. Uh, more temperature, more temperature. Here we're doing the same with the DHT22 sensors, using a bit of library code and sending it. Uh, um, here we go. Yeah, serial one, sending it to the displays. So there we go. Um, this this is the interesting part. So uh, this is where we read the serial data being sent from the next in display to toggle relays. So. When you press a button on the next scene display for say turn the top lights on or turn the scene lights on or the bunk lights uh, it will send a different character and this is what this is doing here um so we're reading serial one serial two um and uh, so the, the arduino is, is dealing with the toggle so you press that button turns it really off press it again turns it off uh that's dealt with in the arduino all the next thing display is doing is every time you press that button, it sends a character. So in this case, where this is for the top lights, um, and uh, if data from the display equals the character lowercase c, and if the top light status is zero, change it to one, uh, and send the on command to board one, channel two, or relay two. So you can see here, it's doing, uh, we're doing the same for main light, uh, same routine. All we're doing is defining a different character coming from the um, next scene display. So this, in this case, it's a D, controlling the main light, toggling the status, uh, turning on relay three on the board, doing a serial print main on. So yeah, um, and then, you know, more of the same all the way down there. Um, Last thing on this particular sketch, um, which is live in the van at the moment, is the ohm meter. It's measuring the sender, the resistance from the sender unit in the LPG tank. A uh, 95 litre tank, 100 ohm resistor in there, you should try and match them. It's kind of like a um, voltage divider, just doing a calculation. Um, and then again, just outputting this to the next day in display. 
um, and we've got some if statements here. If the resistance is uh, equal to less than 75 ohms, and between 74 and 55, you know, it'll print out the different ranges uh, to F0, which is the field on the uh, or the element on the next end, and it'll change the colour again. A traffic light scheme, uh, red, yellow, and green. So, uh, and that's about it for uh, I think the sketch. Yep, yep, yep. They're just different conditions, but it takes it right down to change the box to red and print the word fill. Uh, so next, uh, the, the next steps really for this, um, the next release version is also going to add in um, control of the diesel light heater. I tried to sniff the protocol, doesn't work. Um, and uh, I was going to buy one of the uh, fantastic afterburner kits, but um, uh, they're a bit tricky to hold off at the moment. Uh, and also, really, I just need the thing to come on and off. Um, so the diesel light heater has a um, radio remote control fob, and it's quite easy to, to sniff that using a 433 megahertz receiver board. Um, you run a sketch which pulls all the data out uh, that it's sending, and so each button you press on, off, up, down, um, you grab different codes. So that's what I've done. I've got all those codes there, and I just need to write a bit of code in this, uh, almost like a, a thermostat. I'll put an up and down button and on and off button on the. Uh, I'll design a separate menu screen for the next same display, um, and uh, I'll be able to control the night heater via that. So that's that's going to be the sort of next step for the uh, camper controller. But uh, yeah, I hope you found this useful. Um, I'll do another video on the next day in editor, you know, creating the menus for the display. And also I've got a spreadsheet where I've taken, uh, I've noted down all the pins, pin assignments, uh, all the commands to and from the next day in display. Uh, so it kind of gives you an overview. So uh, as I say, not a, a job to be taken lightly um, unless you're a, an Arduino um, programmer already. Uh, and into these things, but uh, yeah, not not too difficult really. Now that I've got my head around it, and uh, been quite enjoyable. Cheers.